We're now joined by Chris Meredith from Exola. How are you doing today? Very well, thank you. Enjoying the enjoying the rain and the sunshine. So well, come back. see this kind of weather we come from the UK. This is just a Tuesday. Over here, national crisis. Very normal, but a very different situation. So we're, we're yeah. delighted you made it in, and everyone's made it. So yeah, it's today a... too, we were expecting crickets. Frankly, given the weather situation, very much so. No, it's, you've got a good attendance today, and it, there's there's still a nice buzz here. There's a lot of energy about the place, and I really like that. People can work together on that, so it's a great thing to have. Well, it's only our second show, but we are we are pleased with how it's turned out. It's lovely to mix with. That's why we take this thing abroad anyway. It's sure. different communities, different places, and those kind of relations are what you folks are about, isn't it? If yeah. people haven't experienced Exola, what is it the company does? I'm absolutely happy to talk to you about that, and I'm glad you asked. Um, so we're a global video game com um, commerce company. Um, we offer services to help developers and publishers monetize their products and get to market in the most optimum way um, and with the biggest market reach. Right. And what about you specifically? What's your role at the company? So my role is, it's, it's quite simple really, I say my role is to connect people. So the connection point from me to my staff and those guys to the developing community, connecting with games, connecting our solutions to those games, and then connecting all of those to the gamers who in turn then make the community that we then connect with. So Exola is absolutely connected all the way line, through the line there. And I think that's the value of what I do is make sure those connection points work and make sure that all of those things come together. Well, I've seen you talking in previous interviews about the necessity for a direct to consumer approach. Yes. What do you mean by that? I think as we now, as the market matures, the, the opportunities now to be able to hit your consumer directly is where the actual value is going to be because ultimately a lot of the traditional route to market didn't allow you to have an interface with your consumer. But now the ability to be able to work direct with those guys, understand their needs, understand what they want to do, really cultivate a relationship. You only can do that by a direct relationship with the actual your end user. And Zola is all about that. We're all about making sure that we build from the ground up. We have interface with all of the, developing, the developer communities in regards to what they're doing, but fundamentally making sure that our customers, the developers and the publishers, can have that opportunity to interface with the actual end consumer that they've got for a sustainable monetization um, uh, strategy that is really getting to be the most pivotal point in business these days. What does a personalized relationship look like in the modern world? We, we've had an issue where it was all about data, everything is about data, and sure. metrics were gathered, and you could gather information about the users as well as potential clients yeah. and things. Uh, the app stores have shut themselves down a little bit of late for legal reasons, so you can't gather as many data points as you used to be able to. Yeah. Um, so people are finding other ways to try and interact directly with them. Is it simply a case of through, for, for your case, like addressing clients, asking them what they want, asking them what they're looking for, or are there other ways to really kind of personalize your approach to each individual? I, I, as in any relationship, you have to actually work and build the foundations and the ability to communicate and have the knowledge of the, the, the person you're working with is key to that. And what we, are, what we do is make sure that our relationships from the ground up are all about what do you need? What do you need to be successful? How can we help you be successful? We have a variety of tools in regards to the solutions we provide for that. And we work intrinsically um, together with, the, um, with, our, uh, with our customers to make sure that they have the best offerings. So that relationship is like any relationship. It takes time, it takes effort, and it's built over a period of time. So making sure that we understand that. And here in the MEA, there are lots of challenges localization challenges, diversification. We have to be relevant to that, and we're putting a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of investment into MEA, because we believe this has the foundation point for real growth in the future. The interesting thing also about this territory is the fact that it's, it's new. So there's no baggage of history in regards to some of the challenges we face in other parts of Europe and um, around the world. That provides us with clarity of pure offering. We don't have to circumvent, we don't have to go through anything. And every conversation I've had here is about the opportunity going forward. How does that look? How does that work for you? And we are really pleased to continue growing our support within this region 
Um, we've got a new academy that's opened recently. We're off an office in Riyadh. We've got a standalone person here now to actually be at the forefront of those communications. And those are really important things for us to make sure that we, we invest in the foundation points, not only the territory, but the influx of companies and organizations coming into this territory. Well, what are the difficulties of effectively taking your business over into different regions and being, well, for one, respectful of local customs, traditions, of what people want, um, but also the unique demands of the customers in the area? What kind of things do you have to make sure you get right when you are branching out in this way? So, uh, as an organization, we're used to fragmentation. I mean, Europe, YMEA, over 200 countries, 300 languages various things going on right now. So we have to be attuned at a local level. So everything is about what is happening on the local side in regards to what products and services we can actually bring to them. So it's that understanding to make sure that we can be part of their journey. Because the real synergy is we only benefit when my partners benefit in regards to driving their revenues through the products they create. So along the way, we want to make sure we provide best practice, best services, make sure we are relevant to all the issues that may be in, the, in their particular territory, make sure they are compliant. Merchant record is what we do as part of our offering for that as well. So it's, it's all about the sum of the parts, but the sum of the parts all starts with the relationship and the understanding you have with your customer. And that can be from a large organization, mid-tier, or the developer community here that is growing exponentially in regards to what, the, the, and that's not only people coming from this territory, but it's also about the people that are coming into this territory as well. We're seeing a migration of some very large publishers now having a standalone position here, working together with the, 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 the green belt new developers who are coming together with that. So it's old and new in some ways, which I think is really exciting. And we want to be very much centered to that. We want to be around those relationships and we want to help drive this industry. There's, there's the, the, the future, you're right, is, is very much data driven in regards to understanding that, particularly now with AI. So we are very relevant to bringing all of those parts together with the services and solutions we have, but also making sure that they work for our, our customers, work for our clients in a way that is going to be beneficial for them. Mm. And that, that understanding is really key in terms of getting that across. Well, what do you find that publishers, developers, what are they asking for most from you? I feel like the, the beginning of the industry, certainly the mobile industry, mm. was all about UA. It was all about grabbing as many users as you possibly could. And now I hear more and more, it's not as much about that. It's about retention. It's about keeping the people you have rather than the churn. Is this that reflected? Um, I, would, I would absolutely agree with that. I think the, I would turn that as a sort of the whole go-to-market strategy. Um, developers, historically, it's the last thing they've thought about. What's the monetization trade? I've built the game. It's what I've focused on. I'm just building the game. Now, as I talk to guys, this is about not only have you got to be able to build the game, you've got to understand what your go-to-market strategy is because that's the sustainability of your customer base and your future. And on top of that, you've got to really understand and know what monetization means to you, to your investors, and to the customers you've got through that particular, particular game. We think we can help across all of those parameters. We have capabilities not only at the development end, we have a new solution called XPE, which is basically a back-end solution that works with developers to help them get to market in a very efficient, smart way. Ultimately, everything we do in terms of the go-to-market, our solutions, our web shops, um, our, our, paste, our paste solutions. In Europe and within the EMA, we have over 700 paste solutions, which is pretty much more than anywhere else in the world to be able to do that. But that shows the need for those because of the fragmentation in there. But you have to have that if you're going to be relevant to the guys at the local level. So it is all about choice, but it is on making sure that they have every choice they need and every capability to be successful from the services and the solutions we have. So it goes hand in hand, and I'm, I'm, this relationship is goes to the dating process, and we hope then mar the marriage can last for as, as long as it possibly can. And we have a lot of customers that we've been with for years and years and years. Um, so w that relationship is built on trust, is built on results, and it's built on the fact that what inno innovations we are doing and bringing to market, the first people we talk to are our customers about that, to make sure they are aligned with what we are bringing together to the market so that we can be successful together. Fantastic. Chris, thank you for talking to me today. My pleasure. Thank you so much for your time.